Today we're gonna to install this Ambient Weather WS5000 weather station. It's not sponsored. There's, we bought this product off the internet just like you would. We're just gonna show you our experiences with it. Let's get started. We're not sure if we can reach the peak with our skid lift, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, this is going to work great. This is as high as it goes, but it's going to work great. I think I'll come back down and get Christy. You like going up? Yep, it's great. This thing works well for us. Skid-lift.com. Mention Tractor Time with Tim or TTWT and you get a discount. I don't remember what the discount is, but it's useful. It's not a it's not an inexpensive product. There's no question about that. I see a second project. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think yeah. we're gonna have to get your Christmas lights down, Christy. Well, it's about time. Don't you think? Yeah, maybe we'll get a few here. That way I can say I've helped. Uh, yeah. It's May. Got time for the Christmas lights? Yeah. So my plan is to put this right up here like this, something like this. Not a perfect plan, but that's the plan nonetheless. I marked these holes, so I'm ready to drill. Now well, that one didn't hit much. The first one did. That one hit pretty good. That one hit pretty good. Everything but this one. I don't know if I have a different hole for it or not. You're gonna have to put the thing on there before you screw that in. Or does it screw down? Well, I could just take this out. Yep. The post here, all of this came separate. This wasn't a part of the weather station itself. It was an add-on. I decided to go ahead and purchase this because I knew it was made for the post. Probably could have got this all cheaper, although I don't know where to get these anymore. I used to get them just as regular TV antennas, and I have a need for a few more of these. If you know where to get these wall mount posts like this, I'd like to have some. Uh, this one I think has got an inch and a half or a, yeah, inch and a half post probably. I think this is inch or inch and a quarter. Now, what I paid for all of this and what it costs now is likely significantly different. I paid about $500 for the uh, weather station itself and another $200 for additional sensors as well as um, this bracket. I think this was $60. Okay, I'm not going to tighten it all the way up. Okay, you should be good. I used the wobble socket because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get the socket in where I needed to go. And because I got new wobble sockets. <laughs> yeah, that one's not going to do much there. Okay. That. You could swivel that down and put one in the middle. I don't know that I have any more. Yeah, I think it only came with four. Yeah. I mean, I could put one more up near the top, I suppose but I don't think this will hold much. Why don't you back that one out and just put it somewhere else? Okay, I wanna, I think it's probably good enough. The one feature I need for the skid lift is remote start on Johnny. I don't like for him to be sitting here in at idle the whole time we're working up here. Should have brought a deep well for that. This thing feels very stable. I, I mean, yeah, I can make it shake, but it doesn't matter. The, the shaking that we see is not relevant. Okay, I am supposed to point this north, which is directly this way. Am I gonna be able to reach up there? Doesn't matter how much, doesn't matter how high you can lift, you always want just a couple more inches. I'm tightening this up because it, it, it moved a little bit. Now, I don't think the wind sensor and the 
temperature sensor up there have to be perfectly level. I'm sure it would be better if they were perfectly level. The rain sensor we get to in a minute has a level indicator on it. We'll have to make sure it is pretty close. I think, Christy, we're done up here. We may be done with this project, and when we take the Christmas lights down, they're going in the trash. Oh yeah? Well, they were awful. So we got them at Walmart. They were the holiday time LEDs. They were not cheap. Yeah, they were expensive. And for maybe a week before sections of them started going off and coming back on. And when it would rain, sometimes they would come back on. Okay. And they're not worth the effort for me to try to put them up again. Well, since you're saying that, Christy, I'll just take them down the easy way. Oh my goodness. I guess I can just pick up the plastic things off the ground. You know, I sort of cavalier with those, but it is frustrating because I'm not, now I'm gonna have to spend a whole bunch of money. On more Christmas lights. On more Christmas lights this fall. Hey, if you have any ideas on icicle lights that will actually work, I'd like the LED ones. I, I really like the LEDs, but these were just awful. Terrible. Terrible. Best way ever to take the lights down. No, we're not supposed to be using the skids lift unless it's firmly planted on the ground, but hey. It's raining. We're not raising it. Where do you want this, Christy? Well, is in here okay? Maybe. Fine with me. That way we won't have to mow around it. Yeah, I like being in here somewhere. Now, whereabouts yeah. in there? Pick a spot, any spot. Well, we could go something like this. Okay. Have to hold it a little lower. Okay, I brought a little uh, level. Mm -hmm. We're doing the rain gauge now. You can see our prior lacrosse weather station. That's and, actually the second or third one. And it looks like it's working really well, but it's reading nothing in the house. Right, we, and it's solar powered. It, we have not had very good luck with our lacrosse systems. Um, no. Yeah, they're less expensive, but I've, I've eventually spent probably as much on them as I've spent on this. True. ambient ambient system here so and one of our friends recommended the ambient system right yeah yeah well you've met them bill and, bill vanessa. and vanessa they've been on the channel come on christy put this uh see what you think it's it's leaning okay that is level okay now go to 90 degrees to that i think this is one inch maybe inch and a quarter i can't remember pipe you can go anywhere from one to two inches. Now you'd probably be better off going with a 10 foot pipe. We went with the five foot. They're kind of expensive. Yeah. Everything's expensive now, of course. I think they said something about it being best if it were six foot off the ground. Well, we knew we weren't gonna have it six foot off the ground and we had a five foot pipe. Right. But we were thinking this would be high enough. We're not uh, trying to be weather scientists here. And the flagpoles here, whether we're six foot or three foot. Right. A little windy today. Wish I knew what the speed was. We probably do. We go inside now. Hey, I've got the app. Oh, you Let me got see if app. I can tell you. The wind is 16. 16. 64 yeah. degrees. It's fair. Wow, it gives you a lot of information. Again, this isn't sponsored. It's just interesting for us. And we kind of like to know how much rain we get because that makes a difference in some of the projects that we need to do. Wind is 14, gusting to 18. Oh, wow. This is meant to mount to the top of a post like this or to a flat surface. It's got a couple of uh, places out here on the edge where you can put some screws in. It's just little slots that you can use for screws. What it even think? has a level bubble. Yeah, it's got a little bubble level built in. And it looks like we're level. And it looks level, yeah, exactly. So. We should be good on that. They specifically say not to use a power wrench for these, and it makes sense. This is plastic, all this is plastic, yeah. and you don't want to tear all that up. Of course, we do this the day after it's rained about who knows how many inches the we last would two know. or three days. We would know if we had Okay, a... here's, uh, this is not meant to be a step-by-step -step install by any means, but right. we do want to tell you about this, what's it called? This piece, the yeah. bird guard? Yeah. We're gonna call it a bird guard. It's 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 sort of it's meant to keep birds from landing on it. 
and we had a lot of trouble assembling this. The instructions, quite frankly, were not acceptable. No. They send you two separate boxes. Thankfully, they send you enough of this little steel strap here for both. Uh, we'll get a little closer. It's two steel straps that connect together here and here. And then there's these little rubber uh, pieces that the, the bird spikes. I think it's called a rain spike. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. But it's uh, these spikes here to keep the birds out. Well, you insert those straps and there's no way to get them out. I mean, we tried putting a screwdriver under them and prying because we, we kind of did it wrong the first time. Well, thankfully they sent us two sets. Well, you don't need two sets of the steel straps, but what got extra confusing was is that you do need parts of the second set of the little rubber pieces and the spikes themselves. So this was very confusing. The instructions were, well, they were just flat out wrong, quite frankly. Um, and especially by the time you, you combine the pictures with them. There's also a little filter here, they call it. It looks like a spring. It's pretty nifty. See if I can get it out again. Yeah, so just a, just a little spring. You, you drop that in and then you hook it. Hook right there that hooks on the outlet of the rain gauge. I think we're ready to put this on now, Christy. This is inside the rain gauge. There's a little spoon in here that collects the rain and when it gets to a certain weight, it's gonna dump that rain out. I'll just show it. That's what it looks like when it dumps. Every time that dumps, it, uh, it counts it as more rain. So that's how it's unlimited. That's how it, uh, it never has to be emptied. And that's how it counts the amount of rain. So when we go inside, it will say that it's rained this afternoon. Okay, let's see if we can put this on. Ah, oh, there we go. If this doesn't look too bad. Nope. And we're out in the country, so it's kind of normal out here. Good enough. Yep. Hey, let's see some other sensors. They've got several different types of temperature humidity sensors. This is kind of a standard one here. It doesn't come with any probe at all. It's just intended to read this, the temperature. I'm gonna put it here in the garage. We have a lot of water here in the garage. I, I don't mean water on the floor. I mean our water system, our water heater, and all that is here in the garage. We wanna make sure it stays above freezing. So it shows uh, 67 degrees in here right now, 55% humidity. You can configure which channel. There's eight channels for these type of sensors to communicate. Now this is a, a same looking sensor from the outside but it comes with a 10-foot probe on it, a 10-foot extension with a little temperature sensor on the end. I put it in this big freezer. We store beef in our freezer, and you guys know what the prices of beef are right now, so this is pretty important. You can set up the software to alarm you, and it would alarm me if this gets above freezing. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's one thing we're doing here. Now, I'm not going to put it necessarily where I can see it. I'll just set it up here. But it should notify me if the temperature gets above freezing in our freezer. Here's another sensor that looks almost the same. It's called a lightning sensor. And it's supposed to detect lightning within 25 miles. Uh, you can position it indoors or outdoors. And there's some dip switches here inside where the batteries go that allow you to configure it. I think you can have three sensitivity settings or maybe even more, as well as um, indoor versus outdoor. Um, and there's one other setting that I've forgotten at this point. Now, one thing I wanna say about these sensors so far is I just put batteries in them and it all automatically connected. I did no configuration whatsoever to get these to connect to the system, and I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe they're just within proximity, and so it detects them and, and allows them to work. The temperature sensors, I do have to configure them to be on a different channel, or I assume I have to. Now, here's one more sensor type. This is a soil moisture sensor, and it looks much harder to configure. Uh, Christy read some directions on this. She said you have to go scoop up some dirt leave it inside for a while so it gets totally dried out. In other words, you have to calibrate it. So you get it fully dry, then you get it fully soaked, and then you can actually deploy it. So my intent is to put this in the garden, just to kind of see what, uh, to watch the soil moisture levels. I don't know how deep you're supposed to put it yet, but I'm gathering like this, right? This is where the battery goes out here. Speaking of the batteries, they recommended lithium batteries 
for cold weather. The lithium batteries are supposed to work down to minus 40, whereas the alkaline batteries only work to 4 Fahrenheit. Now one other point on the weather, the temperatures. Some of the temperature sensors uh, have, I, I believe, an error on the text on the outside of them. They say that they are from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to something like 140. Well, when I look at the centigrade numbers right beside it, it's the equivalent of minus 40 to 140. And sure enough, the one of the temperature sensors is a little bit different. It said minus 40 to 140. So, so yeah, um, I believe all these temperature sensors are sensitive from minus 40 to 140 degrees. <laughs> you can let him in. Hey, what are you doing? I didn't, I didn't say you could let the cat in. Well, let's have a look at the display here. This is the outdoor temperature. This is the current wind speed. There's the gust. You can configure all this as to whether you want it to be miles per hour, centigrade, uh, Fahrenheit, whatever you want. This is the indoor temperature right here. And it's alternating. Actually, I said it was the indoor, but it's alternating between our other temperature sensors. So 78 in, in the house, 68.5 in the garage, 7.7 .7 in the freezer, it looks like right now. This is the amount of rain that we've had. And all of the rain has been me tipping the little cup in there like I showed you. This is the settings page. And you can connect this to a couple of weather servers. So there's an opportunity to connect it to Weather Underground. And you can also connect it to ambientweather.net. So a couple of servers there that we can connect to. So it's available on Weather Underground, Wonderground it's called as well as ambientweather.net. You can go see it. Uh, I've named it Tractor Time with Tim on both of them, so hopefully, hopefully they show up that way. The ambient weather seems to show it up under its network key somehow, or the, the name, which you know doesn't seem like its friendly name. That's something I'd like to, to see changed. But you guys are welcome to look at it. Check it out here in Lebanon, Indiana. There's a mobile app with ambient weather and Wonderground. There's also um, uh, a web-based app that you can use on your iPad or PC as well. Uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this thing so far. The setup was relatively easy. The instructions weren't perfect for some of the mechanical setup. Uh, Christy and I weren't incredibly happy with those aspects. Some of the pictures didn't quite match up, uh, and some of the instructions on some of the accessories weren't weren't necessarily perfect but we were able to work through it and I'm sure you can too and overall it just feels like a better unit there's a little more attention to detail and it just feels like a more advanced unit than the the, the less expensive lacrosse systems that we've been trying to to get a, along with in the past can I justify seven hundred dollars for a weather station probably not but I've, I've long wanted one and so I finally just went and bought one Hey, I hope you found this helpful. It's been kind of fun installing it. And yeah, I'll keep you updated via community posts or whatever as to whether it's still working. And don't hesitate to ask a question. Anything you ask in the comments section, I'll try to answer. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. My problem is I'm allergic to you, a little bit. This is for Tom, we're petting the kitty. Yeah. Now it's time for you to go. You better get him before he gets up. <laughs>